Good day everyone. This is Dr. Soper here and today I'll be demonstrating how to work with and format the appearance of data in Microsoft Excel. As with the previous video in this series, this particular video is intended for people who have either very little or no prior experience with Microsoft Excel. Even if you have used Excel before, however, I hope that you will learn something new and useful by watching this video. With those preliminaries out of the way, let's take a look at the six topics that we will address in this video. To begin, we'll explore a few different ways of moving data from one cell to another in an Excel spreadsheet. After that, we'll learn about Excel's fill handle and we'll see how to use it to automatically enter data into adjacent cells. Next, we'll learn several different methods for changing the width of a column or the height of a row in an Excel spreadsheet. Our fourth topic will focus on changing the appearance of the text on a spreadsheet, including how to merge cells, change fonts and font sizes, make the text bold, italic, or underlined, change the alignment of the text, and change both the color of the text and the background color of a cell. After that, we'll learn how to change the appearance of the borders around a cell, and we'll conclude the video by learning how to print a spreadsheet or a portion thereof. In order to facilitate our exploration of these six topics, we will be creating a simple report in Excel which shows the number of people who have visited a particular website each month from 2009 through 2015. Let's get started. In this first section of the video, we'll learn two different methods for moving the contents of one cell on an Excel spreadsheet to another cell on that spreadsheet, namely through cutting and pasting and through dragging and dropping. Let's say that we begin with an empty Excel spreadsheet and we type the word January into cell C5. Now imagine that we want to move what we've typed to cell A3. One way we can do this is by cutting and pasting. To cut and paste the value of cell C5 into cell A3, we first select cell C5 and press Control X to initiate the cut operation. We then select cell A3 and press Control V in order to perform the paste operation. In this way, the value in cell C5 can be easily moved to cell A3. Another useful way of accomplishing the same task is by dragging and dropping the word January from cell C5 to cell A3. To do this, we first select cell C5 and then move our mouse to the border of the cell. If we've done this correctly, a four-way arrow icon will appear as part of the mouse cursor. We then simply need to hold down the left mouse button drag the mouse cursor from cell C5 to cell A3 and then release the left mouse button. The word January has now been moved from cell C5 to cell A3. Next, let's learn a bit about Excel's fill handle. The fill handle is an extremely useful feature that allows us to quickly and automatically enter data into adjacent cells within an Excel spreadsheet. The fill handle can be used to quickly copy the value of one cell into neighboring cells, or it can be used to automatically enter information into neighboring cells according to a known pattern. Let's see how this works. To begin, I will type the value 2009 into cell B2. If I wanted to copy this value into cells C2, D2, and E2, I could quickly do so by using Excel's fill handle. First, I would simply need to select the cell containing the content that I wish to copy. In this case, I want to copy the value in cell B2. The fill handle appears as a small square in the bottom right corner of my selected cell. To use the fill handle, I simply need to click on the small square, hold down the mouse button, and drag the mouse cursor from cell C2 over to cell E2. 
when I release the mouse button, the value from cell B2 will be automatically copied into cells C2, D2, and E2. Next, let's see how we can use the fill handle to automatically enter data according to a known pattern. Excel, for example, is smart enough to know that January is a month of the year. If I click on the cell containing the word January, and I then slowly drag the fill handle down the column, a small tooltip box will appear which shows the value that Excel will automatically enter for us into the currently selected cell. As you can see, if I drag the fill handle from cell A3 to cell A14 and then release the mouse button, Excel will automatically fill the selected cells with the months of the year. As you can imagine, this can save both a lot of time and a lot of typing. Excel is aware of many additional types of existing patterns beyond just the months of the year including times, days of the week, dates, financial quarters, and so forth. The fill handle tool is also smart enough to identify simple numerical patterns that we create ourselves. For example, we could use the fill handle to automatically fill in a series of years ranging from 2009 to 2015. To do this, we must first type 2010 in cell C2. Excel is smart enough to notice that there is a pattern or relationship among the values in cells B2 and C2. Namely, that the value in cell C2 is one greater than the value in cell B2. If I then select cells B2 and C2, and then slowly drag the fill handle to the right, we can see that Excel has identified our pattern and will automatically fill in the years for us as soon as we release the mouse button. As you can see, the fill handle can be an extremely useful tool. Next, we'll learn about how to change column widths and row heights within an Excel spreadsheet. Generally speaking, there are three ways in which we can adjust the widths of columns or the heights of rows. Dragging with the mouse, double clicking with the mouse, or by using the format button. Perhaps the easiest way to change the width of a column is simply to grab the dividing line between two columns with the mouse and then drag the mouse to the left or to the right until the target width is achieved. A similar strategy can, of course, be used to change the height of a row. Another useful way of setting the width of the column or the height of a row is by double clicking on the line which divides two columns or two rows. Double clicking on the dividing line in this way tells Excel to automatically adjust the width of a column or the height of a row so that its contents can be fully displayed without overlapping into another row or column. We can also auto-fit the height of a row or the width of a column by using the Format button. If, for example, we wanted to automatically adjust the widths of columns A through H in our spreadsheet, we could do so by first selecting those columns, clicking on the Format button, and then selecting the Auto Fit Column Width option. Next, we'll learn about many ways in which we can change the appearance of text in an Excel spreadsheet. Excel provides us with many different ways to change the way that the text looks in our spreadsheets. Some of the commonest and most useful things that we can do to change the appearance of our text include merging cells, changing fonts, changing font sizes, making text bold, italic, or underlined, changing text alignment, and changing foreground and background colors. 
Say, for example, that we want to add a title to our spreadsheet. To do this, we could begin by selecting cells A1 through H1 and then clicking the Merge and Center button. This will automatically merge the eight cells together into one cell and center the text within that cell. Recalling that we are building a report which shows the number of people that visited a particular website over time, an appropriate title for our report might be Website Visitors by Month and Year. At this point, it may also be useful to add some website visitation data to our report. Since I'm such a nice guy, I have prepared some data for us in advance, which I will now paste into our spreadsheet. In order to make our report a bit more useful, it may also be a good idea to add a yearly total for each year of the website visitation data. To do this, I will type yearly total into cell A15 and will then use Excel's auto sum button and fill handle to compute the total number of visitors to the website for each year. Don't worry if you're unfamiliar with the auto sum button. I will be discussing this feature in more detail in the next video. Now that we have some data, we can make our report title a little more distinct by changing its font. To do this, we simply select the cell whose font we want to change and then choose a new font from the font drop-down list. For our example, I will choose the Georgia font for the report title. We can also change the font size in order to make the report title more distinct. To do this, we simply need to select the cell whose font size we want to change and then choose a new font size from the font size drop-down list. For our example, I will choose a font size of 14 for the report title. Beyond changing fonts and font sizes, we may also want to ensure that text stands out by making it bold, italic, or underlined. To do this, we simply need to select the cells whose appearance we want to change and then click on the bold, italic, or underlined buttons on the toolbar. For our example, I think it would be a good idea to make the title of the report appear in bold as well as the years, months, and yearly totals. I will therefore select the appropriate cells and click on the bold button on the toolbar in order to make the text within those cells appear in bold. Since our report contains so many large numbers, it may also be a good idea at this point to add a thousands separator so that the numbers are easier to read. To do this, I simply select all of the website visitation numbers in which I am interested and then click on the thousands separator icon on the toolbar. Since we're dealing with whole number values, I will hide the decimal points by clicking twice on the decrease decimal button. Next, we may want to further improve the visual appearance of our report by changing the text alignment of some of the cells. For our example, I would like to center all of the years and right align all of the values in column A. To do this, I simply need to select the appropriate cells and then click on either the center or align right buttons on the toolbar. Finally, we can make our report look a bit more professional by adjusting the colors on the spreadsheet. I may, for example, want to change the color of the title. To do this, I first select the cell containing the title and then choose a new color for the text from the font color dialog box. For example, I think I will make the title dark blue. It is also possible to easily change the background color of one or more cells. For example, 
If I want to change the background color for the cells on the report which contain the years and the yearly totals, I simply need to select those cells and then choose a new background color from the Fill Color dialog box. For our example, I think I will make the background color of these cells light blue. Hopefully you will agree that our report is starting to look a lot better. Next, let's learn how to change the appearance of cell borders in an Excel spreadsheet. Excel allows us to change the way that the borders around cells appear so that we can easily highlight certain information or create visual divisions between the data on our spreadsheet. We can do this by changing the top, left, bottom, or right borders of one or more cells. Excel also allows us to create double line borders such as those that we might find on financial or accounting reports. And if we're dissatisfied with these basic options, Excel also allows us to create custom borders in order to suit our preferences. Returning to our example, we may want to add border lines to our report in order to visually separate the title from the years and the years and the yearly totals from the raw data. To do this, we simply select the cells whose borders we want to change and then specify the border style that we want by using the cell border dialog box. For our example, I will create a bottom border under the title cell and under the cells which contain the years. I will also create horizontal border lines to visually separate the yearly totals from the other data on the spreadsheet. In financial and accounting reports, it is common for totals to be separated from raw data by a double line, and Excel allows us to easily emulate this convention. To add a double line between our yearly totals and the raw data on the spreadsheet, I simply need to select all of the values in the December row, and then select the bottom double border option from the cell border dialog box. At this point, I think that our report is looking quite nice, so I won't be making any further changes to the cell borders. If, however, we were dissatisfied with the cell borders, we could customize the borders to meet our needs simply by selecting the More Borders option in the Cell Border dialog box. Now that we've become familiar with how to work with and format the appearance of data in Microsoft Excel, let's take a moment to learn how to print our work. The good news is that printing your spreadsheet is extremely easy. To print your spreadsheet, you simply need to go into Excel's Backstage view by clicking on the File tab and then selecting the Print option. A preview of the way that your spreadsheet will look when it is printed will appear on the right side of your screen. If we are dissatisfied with the way that the preview looks, we can adjust the print settings as needed. For our example, I see that our report will not fit onto one sheet of paper if it is printed with a portrait orientation. So I will choose to change the orientation to landscape. At this point, I can print the report simply by clicking on the Print button. Instead of printing the entire spreadsheet, it is also possible to print just a selected group of cells. To do this, we simply need to select the cells that we want to print, and then once again select the Print option within Excel's Backstage view. Finally, we need to tell Excel to print only the selected cells by changing the print settings. If we've done this correctly, only the cells that we selected will appear in the preview image. Well, my friends, thus ends our overview of working with and formatting the appearance of data in Microsoft Excel. I hope that you learned something interesting in this video, and until next time, have a great day.